welcome to Forbidden Planet TV and I'm joined today by, by Adrian Young who is here to talk about her newest book Spells for Forgetting. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank um, you for having me, no problem. Uh, what can you tell us about your newest book without too many spoilers? This is a book that's hard to talk about yeah. without spoilers but it's I, I will say it's pretty different from my young adult novels. I'm you know traditionally in young adult fantasy and this is more of a contemporary fantasy, I suppose. It's, um, you know, it's a kind of like a mystery thriller. It's kind of like a small town drama. It's multi-generational. It's very romantic. Um, it kind of, and it's witchy, you know, mm. it kind of falls in this crack between genres. Um, but it, at its core, it is about the um, unsolved murder of a 17 year old girl that happened 14 years ago. And it centers around a man named August Salt, who is returning home to his very rural island hometown um, after being gone all this time. And he was kind of driven out because he was suspected of her murder. And he's kind of coming back to bury his mother's ashes and kind of face the past. And he's also going to have to reconcile with a lost love and all of that. So it, there's, there's a lot going on in the book. Um, and it definitely has some of the same kind of hallmarks of my writing that you find in all of my books, but it is a really different kind of story. That's good. Okay, cool. Um, and so what was your starting point for Spouse for Forgetting? Is, do you find kind of the character comes first or the setting? Um, ideas usually come to me in a picture. This has happened with all of my books. I've kind of had a very detailed image in my mind that kind of hits me. And then the story development process is really about kind of investigating the who, what, when, where, why of that picture. With Spells for Forgetting, it was very much centered around August. And um, I had this picture of him on the ferry, kind of coming toward this, drifting slowly, you know, toward this ominous like island. And I knew he was coming home to bury his mother's ashes and that there was like a lot of trepidation and a lot of mysteries, kind of like the, the feelings I was getting from it. And so as I developed the story further, that's really when all the, you know, I kind of start coloring in the edges of the picture and this, like the world and the plot and all of that kind of come together. But for spells, it really did all begin with that like moment on the ferry, which is the opening of the book. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have that kind of, I suppose, the theme of uh, water and omens in a lot of your other books. <laughs> yes. So where does that come from? Like, do you do you kind of live next to water or, you know, is it like mm -hmm. a big part of your own life and it kind of gets drawn into, into your books? Yeah, I feel, I have always just felt very connected to water. Um, it is a, it's, it is a running theme. It's like the fjords, you know, in sky and sea, and then fable obviously takes place on the water and the whole world is like surrounding water. With spells, they are in the uh, Puget Sound mm -hmm. area, the Salish Sea. And even with the book I'm working on now, it's centered around this town where this big river cuts through it and the river is a really important element of the story. So I'm not really sure exactly where that comes from, but I like personally, feel very drawn to water mm -hmm. and um it's always kind of just held this like mystical quality to me and i am very much a person who believes in signs and omens and so i think that kind of naturally weaves throughout all of my stories as well mm -hmm. yeah you, you can definitely kind of see um i think i don't know if you kind of grew up the same with kind of lots of old wives tales and you know like not crossing in front of a black cat and all those kind mm -hmm. of things and you some of those they really stick with you as you grow older and you're yeah. Just, yeah well and i also i've had a lot of strange experiences in my life okay. like really i mean just weird kind of unexplainable things that have helped me or like really caused me to be a big believer mm -hmm. in kind of the mystical side of things even though I don't really have any answers about them <laughs> or claim to. Um, but I do think that, that I kind of see the world that way. Mm -hmm. And so of course, I think it bleeds into all of my stories. Definitely. I think as well, um, so interestingly with this, I don't know if this has happened with your other books, but I was looking at your kind of, you've got a Spotify playlist mm -hmm. that you've kind of made for the, for the mm -hmm. overall vibes. Um, and it's absolutely, some of the songs are absolutely beautiful. Oh, so, I love them too. Oh my God. <laughs> um, so the kind of idea of me 
mood music is that something that's quite big to your writing process it it is absolutely crucial Mm -hmm. like i i don't think i honestly don't think i could write books without music um I, so I tend, I'm kind of known for being a a quick, like a fast writer. I can draft a book really fast, but what I cannot do is develop a story fast. And so I feel like, you know, where some writers might get an idea and they get really inspired and they plot out the book and they start writing it. I cannot do that. I have to spend like a year, sometimes like three years developing a story in my head before I can really start drafting it. And I'm almost a bit superstitious about it. So um, I feel like music plays a huge part in the brainstorming process, the visualization aspect. Um, I'm always build, the, one of the first things I start doing for a project is I start building my playlist. Mm-hmm. And I have one for every single book. I have one for future books and future ideas where um, I often will you know, get these seeds of an idea, this picture while I'm listening to music. And so that song will be like the first song on the playlist, you know, (laughs) and then everything kind of helps me uh, kind of keep the mood at the forefront of the development of the story. Yeah, it's 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 so yeah, it just feels very kind of um, almost like visceral in a way, like just such a kind of impactful part of the the book. But listening to the music, it kind of just made me want to reread the book. So read it and reread it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so the one of the um, I suppose tropes that you've used before, but a trope that a lot of us love is the kind of friends to lovers romance, mm-hmm. and you obviously have Emery and August in this book, Fable and West in obviously one of the kind of hottest pirate romances, um, <laughs> obviously in Sky in the Deep as well. So is this a theme that um, you enjoy writing, and, and will you kind of continue to? Yeah, I think, you know, I try to write what I relate to. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to write what I don't relate to. And I have never been a person that like falls fast and hard, Mm -hmm. you know? So I think I really enjoy the complexities that having a past, like a history with someone brings to like the on the page Mm -hmm. development of a romance because there's so much more to work with. And with spells, it was so fun because they have you know, known each other since they were children and they have been through a lot together and they fell in love young and, um, you know, have had this very passionate romance, but there's been such a break Mm -hmm. between them and a lot of hurt and like shared trauma. And so I feel like there's just so much more tension and pressure available to you than, um, you know, a love at first sight. Um, type thing which you can create tension in other ways with those tropes but it's it is a favorite of mine like I just feel like it just feels like delicious to me like I just (laughs) want to like dig into it and like really um get under the layers you know and I think it's really fun to do when you're working like within those parameters yeah and I think um you've mentioned before about being a kind of discovery writer Mm -hmm. so how did spells kind of develop and did it kind of go off in a direction you weren't necessarily expecting? Yes, it did. (laughs) It was, I am a discovery writer and Spells is a, it's the type of story that I could not tell without planning Mm -hmm. um, because there is multiple storylines kind of interweaving and overlapping and informing each other and to allow that to unfold to a reader from page one in a way that is not confusing is just it's a challenge. It was like a very, it was a great challenge for me. And so it did force me to have to plot out sections of the book in a way that I normally would not do. So typically I would like, you know, do a lot of story development before I start drafting a book. And that's like about the world, the characters, the visuals, um, kind of the main arc of the plot. And then I will start writing with really not much planned out, like at all. And I mean, I might know kind of ballpark where I'm headed. So I, you know, I'll start writing, I'll write the first section. And then once I get about the a quarter of a third the way through, then I would, I have to stop and I have to be like, okay, how am I getting to my midpoint? You know, well with spells, it was not like that. It's like, I jumped in, wrote the first couple chapters to kind of sink into the world Mm -hmm and kind of get my bearings, but then I had to really do a lot of work as far as not necessarily plotting out each chapter, but plotting out which clues 
are dropped, like what bits of information are dropped in what order. Mm -hmm. And then also trying to figure out how can I reveal this information in a way that will track, you know, yeah. with the reader, where they're not like, they don't have whiplash or they're like, wait, who are we talking about? When is this, you know? And that also comes down a lot to the structure of the book. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how, how the chapters are unfolding, what POVs you're using and all of that. So it was a very different type of process for me. It still was not like a, let's outline the whole book situation, but it was very much like um, a different challenge, I guess you could say. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And did you find that obviously um, we were talking before about the, I suppose the difference in kind of writing kind of young adult uh, mm -hmm. fiction and writing kind of adult fiction. Um, like how did your kind of process have to differ and also obviously having like multiple POVs in, mm -hmm. in this book? Like, Yeah, it, I mean, it's different. It's like, you know, in young adult, it, my focus is very much like the character. Mm -hmm. It's very character driven. Um, the plots are not like super, you know, uh, expansive plots. I feel like I really like to focus on the character in the immediate world and kind of the tie between the internal and the external arc. With spells and even with like my future adult books that I have slated, um, they're just much more complex storylines. And so I feel like I, I do feel more freedom kind of an adult to explore those and take some risks in that way. Um, I also think like readers are a little bit more patient sometimes with adult, like where they're like, you know, it's like, go with me. They don't expect such a quick pace maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so it has been a different approach. And then also there's just more adult themes, you know, like I think in young adult, we're talking a lot about like identity, your mm -hmm. place in the world, who am I, you know, those types of kind of enduring questions that we even have when we're like 60, right? But they're just different types of questions mm -hmm. than like some of the themes that you can kind of dig deeper into with adult. Mm -hmm. Now, to, you touched on before about the um, obviously there's a kind of unsolved murder in spells. Mm -hmm. So, for, for a bit of a, a funner question, mm -hmm. if you were offed in a fictional setting, uh -huh. which detective would you like to solve your murder? Um, Sherlock. <laughs> We should have guessed. Yes, I know. <laughs> I love Sherlock, but I I just imagine him like you know doing his thing. Like I I don't know. I'm like I just want to be like in his realm, his bubble. <laughs> I'd be a little side character. I don't even have to make a cameo in one of his mm -hmm. episodes. I just you know I can just be the dead. I'm already dead when this episode starts. Right. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, we need we need more Sherlock on the TV. Yes, definitely. we do. <laughs> um, so talking before about kind of influences, and I I was kind of like mentioned Yellow Jackets before, but mm -hmm. also almost that Gilmore Girls kind of like small town vibe. Mm -hmm. And then uh, even I was just thinking back to like the Sinclair family and E. Lockhart's um, mm -hmm. duology now. Um, so what other things kind of have influenced you was there any kind of uh books or films tv that are just like oh i love that setting or i love that kind of idea yeah i i love things that are very atmospheric mm -hmm. and so like i think one of the things that has heavily influenced my um adult projects is uh i don't i don't know how big it is here it's called the killing um yes. it was a show it's been over now for quite a while in the u.s but it heavily and in, has influenced like my own approach to characterization and just the complexity of like story weaving. Um, I feel like that is a really big one. I love anything with a small town. Mm -hmm. I just love it. Like it could be a comedy, it could be um, a mystery, you know, whatever. I am just always there for the small town. So I feel like Spells was so great for that. Yes. Um, and then uh, there's just so many so many things like even writing I love Janet Fitch and I love Tana French mm -hmm. and you know like kind of just things that have like a little bit more of like a weight to them I love romantic stories and then another one that comes to mind is um have you seen the movie Age of Adeline right okay yes okay so like this was a book that really uh 
had like an impact on me because I I kind of felt after I watched the movie like I want to write books like that yeah. like they're not super easily definable there's like this kind of supernatural underbelly to the story but it's grounded in our world and it's just so atmospheric mm -hmm. like everything was so beautiful um the way they did everything and romance is like the undertow mm -hmm. also of the book and so I I feel like in the back of my mind when I'm thinking of like my adult fiction stories I kind of always have stories like that in the back of my mind that just feel kind of different and special mm -hmm. oh, um, <laughs> and so you um, mentioned before you kind of hinted at uh, some things you're working on next so I know mm -hmm. is Saint the next book you have coming out which I think a lot of people are very excited yes. for. Yes, <laughs> Saint is coming out later this year in November. I'm very excited about it and actually in the UK I believe it comes out in January. Yes, we've um, got to wait a little longer. Yes, just <laughs> not too long but um, but yes, so Saint is coming out and that is kind of the fourth in the fable world but mm -hmm. it's like a prequel. Um, I have a nonfiction project coming out at the end of the year for writers. It's called the Storyteller's Workbook. And the book that I'm actually actively working on right now is drafting my next adult fiction novel. Um, and that one we haven't revealed anything about at all, but it's, a, it's another standalone that's very much in the same vein mm -hmm. as Spells for Forgetting. And then on the YA front, my next project is the Fallen City duology, which has been waiting very patiently in the wings while I finished up the Fable stuff. Um, and that'll be coming out, I think, in 24. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you're all set for the next few years. Yeah, it's <laughs> busy. It's a kind of a busy, crazy schedule. Yeah. Very, very much. Um, and you also have a uh, writing workshop that you um, mm -hmm. that you run and it's constantly kind of sold out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what kind of made you want to set that up and have you found that that's kind of also influenced how your writing has kind of moved? Yeah, I think that it's, it, the workshop has been really validating for me because I feel like I do, um, you know, I kind of, I do have, a very just different approach I think to writing relationship with writing I think most of us do mm -hmm. but we are all all writers like I feel like we at least go through a stage where we're trying to fit ourselves into these boxes of like adopting this person's process or I want to be like this author I want to write books exactly like this um, I want to capture this career and emulate that and when in reality I think we all have a very unique process and a unique viewpoint and perspective as far as storytelling goes and so in creating the workshop I really was kind of just whenever I would have like thoughts about this stuff I would like put it in a document on my computer and eventually it kind of became such a big document that it was more kind of turning into like material yeah. you know um and I decided to launch the workshop during the pandemic mm -hmm. the you know was it at the very beginning of the pandemic or the year after it was after year sorry the pandemic is like a <laughs> time warp to me it's very much but it was so the pandemic started and at the end of that year I launched my mm -hmm. workshop and I really did think like it, I might get like 20 writers mm -hmm. who were like you're speaking my language you know well that was not the case and it turned out to be um really successful and there were a lot of people looking for something like that because I think that when you you know if you're googling characterization or the craft of writing a three-act structure or beat sheets like you can find a million things right mm -hmm. online but um writing with the soul really focuses much more on the relation the writer's relationship to storytelling mm -hmm. as an individual and so I've had a blast doing it <laughs> I've had so much fun and we've run several of them now um, and it's kind of grown into like a whole writing community. It's been really special and very, very unexpected. Oh, it, amazing, amazing. Um, and how often do you do like retreats? Is it like yearly or? Well, we just started the retreats this year mm -hmm. and we're doing two. And then um, I'm hoping to do them next year as well. It's kind of like, I'm really flying by the seat of my pants when it comes to all this stuff because I really didn't, I didn't expect it to turn into like a whole mm. thing. I thought I was going to like run one workshop with like a few writers <laughs> and then it kind of grew into this um, whole thing. So I feel like I've kind of been following its lead mm. a little bit and I'm not totally sure like what the future holds for it. But um, right now it's, it's been like a really fun, inspiring project. Mm. Um, 
And then just just to uh, finish off, we've got two more questions. So mm -hmm. what are you currently reading and what are you most looking forward to uh, reading or even watching coming up? Okay. Well, I just read Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. Okay. And I seriously, I won't shut up about it. <laughs> I have like told so many people about this, this book. I've been like going down my contact list like telling people like have you read this um it was such a lovely surprise it is a murder mystery and um but it's so brilliant it kind of it, it goes back in time she's like witnesses her son committing murder and then she the next morning she wakes up and it's the day before and so she's like going back in time kind of trying to piece together what happened um, but it's also this really, it's a brilliant retrospect on like motherhood, on marriage, on like regrets and just life experience. Um, I was so blown away by it. Um, so I loved that. That's like the thing this probably best read I've had this year. Mm -hmm. Um, what I'm looking forward to, I'm very much looking forward to the new Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. TV show. I'm very curious about that. Um, and in books, I feel like the list is very, very long. Yeah. Yeah. Get, <laughs> Everything. Get <laughs> yeah, Every I feel like there's, there's some good ones coming up. Oh, yeah, definitely. And the most important question. So in Spouts for Forgetting, there's the Blackwoods Tea Shop. Mm -hmm. um, if you had to get rid of one drink, tea or coffee. Oh, gosh. Which you think? That is so hard. I love tea, but I feel like my morning cup of coffee is like a sacred spiritual experience. So if I got rid of the coffee, I don't know that I, I could go on. <laughs> like, I think I would have to get rid of the tea, but I do love tea so much too. Yeah. yeah. Tea. Oh, so oh gray in the afternoon. Yes. Yeah, nothing, oh, nothing, so nothing good. Beats, nothing beats that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and yet, signed copies of all of these books and spells for forgetting are available on forbiddenplanet.com and in all nine of our stores. So go check it out very, very soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.